Let's um, talk this through by speaking with a global affairs analyst, Kunle Fallow, who is joining me via Zoom to discuss this latest development. Thank you so much for joining us in World Now. Now, U.S. House Speaker uh, Nancy Pelosi's arrival in Taiwan on Tuesday made her the highest ranking official to uh, you know, visit the Democratic island in a quarter century. But this has sparked a furious reaction from Beijing. Why is China furious over Pelosi's trip to, to Taiwan? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, um, it, it calls for concern uh, in China because Taiwan is a self-ruled uh, democratic country that has 23 million people in it. It's a little island that the Chinese government believes it's rightfully theirs. And uh, when you have the third ranking member of the uh, of the uh, U.S. Uh, political officer coming over to Taiwan, it, it smells uh, a, ca a cause for concern for, for China uh, because um, for, for quite a number of reasons, um, if, if the United States is coming in to offer its unflinching support to Taiwan, uh, it, it means that uh, China is not being recognized as the original owner of, of that uh, little island. And there have been uh, talks and, and there have been uh, insinuations from the Chinese uh, party that uh, they own, you know, you know, Taiwan and they're working tirelessly to reunify Taiwan with mainland China. Mm. Now, having said that, there, there are other um, reasons why it's really uh, becoming a serious escalation and problem for, for China because they feel like they exclusively own the, the little country and, and they're doing everything they can. And then again, it kind of um, delegitimizes their power in the region because uh, Taiwan is gradually becoming a force to reckon with in that region. And that will leave China uh, to be scuttling and not to be competitive in that region, uh, particularly when it comes to technology and other uh, uh, other items that has been exported from China. So, uh, economically and politically, uh, uh, it's it's uh, very important that China takes a hold of China of Taiwan. But this is not going well for the United States because they're looking uh, to support and they're you know, showing support for Taiwan with the promises and particularly with the, uh, you know, uh, with the recent um, uh, visit Visits, from yeah. Nancy Pelosi. Right. So, so Apple's understand what you think this means when multiple organs of the Communist Party, including uh, the Foreign Ministry, the Defense Ministry, one that a visit, that's Pelosi's visit, push Taiwan into the abyss of disaster and bring deep misfortune to its people. What do you think they mean by, by, by that statement? Well, to be honest with you, the rhetoric is just coming uh, from a political point of view just to ratchet up um, tension. Uh, but it's more of more talk and, and, and less action. Why am I saying this? Um, let's go back to 1996 when um, the then president, uh, Lee, was running for re-election. He had went back to visit the United States and um, that didn't go down well with the uh, incumbent president in in China that time, and they fired missiles. And and this is not the first time this is happening. It has happened between 1995 and 1996, like I rightly mentioned. So um, they could have done more uh, to deter Nancy Pelosi from coming. Uh, they couldn't do it, but there are more uh, political rhetoric uh, from China uh, that's seeming that is spelling doom for Taiwan, but be that as it may, yeah. um, it's, it's, it shows that the United States is not flinching in a support for Taiwan. And, and there's really little to what China can do as for right now. I, I, I guarantee that there are multiple uh, negotiations on underneath uh, meetings going on right now. Um, it, it will continue because we haven't seen the end of this matter. Yeah, well, very quickly, um, I'm not sure whether you noticed it, you know, because elsewhere on the island, some groups of protesters stormed on American flags and held a sign or held up signs urging or disparaging Pelosi and urging the U.S. Delegation, delegation to go home. One held up a sign calling Pelosi an American witch. So does it mean that some Taiwanese actually support unification with China? 
Uh, it just goes uh, across the board. There are different divides and different beliefs on, in different parts of the country. Uh, let's use Russia and Ukraine uh, as, as an example. Um, in some parts of Russia, uh, some parts of Ukraine, you have um, people that, that favors uh, Russia coming in to take over the country. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening in Taiwan. There are some parts of the Taiwanese people that truly, truly believe that China is the legitimate owner of, you know, legitimate uh, uh, country that's supposed to take over Taiwan. Yeah. And don't forget, there's only 23 million people in a small island. They're still reliant on them for for uh, importation of, of sand uh, from China. And, and they also, in return, send foods and, and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, China being a dominant uh, country in that region, they'll still have they still have some form of reliance on them. But be that as it may, that's not to say the entire population of uh, Taiwanese people are in full support of uh, China taking over Taiwan, regardless of the small, um, you know, the small protests here and there. Well, global affairs analyst Kunle Falawo, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot.